Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Andrew Brankley and welcome to this video on the 2021 edition of the Static Evaluators Workbook. This video will provide a brief overview of important changes introduced in the 2021 workbook, available now on the Sarno website. I download a copy before you turn into this guy. I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. Now what I'm with isn't it, and what's it seems weird and scary to me. It'll happen to you. So, let's begin this video by comparing the 2016 version of the Evaluator's Workbook to the 2021 version. Both documents serve the same function. They help evaluators interpret and communicate the results of their static assessments. This is accomplished using three types of information. The first two, i.e. percentiles and risk ratios, actually remain unchanged in the 2021 version, which to most is probably good news as it enables a certain amount of continuity and consistency in their interpretations. In fact, the real changes were to the absolute sexual recidivism estimates. The 2016 edition provided 5 and 10 year estimates for the high risk, high need samples and 5 year estimates for routine samples. The 5 year routine estimates were updated from a larger set of samples and 10 year estimates were added. The 5 and 10 year high risk, high need estimates remain unchanged. 20 year projected estimates were also added for both samples. Static recidivism estimates are generated using meta-analysis, which is the process of taking results from individual studies, regardless of whether they are significant or not, and averaging them in particular by weighting the studies based upon the amount of error or variability present within each study, producing an overall super estimate of sorts that can be used. Let's have a look at the different samples using this figure. As you can see by the title, four things are highlighted in this figure. Placement along the X or horizontal axis indicates differences in the static 99R mean score in each sample. And although I am focusing on static 99R, similar changes took place to 2002R. Placement along the Y or vertical axis indicates the five-year sexual recidivism rate observed in the sample. Samples will be represented by circles. The size of the circle is directly proportional to the sample size, and as you remember, bigger samples have less error and are therefore given more weight. Lastly, each circle will be color-coded to represent the country sampled. All of this information and more are available in the published meta-analyses. So let's begin with the 2016 meta-analysis that was used in the 2016 Evaluator's Workbook. If my color coding or circle sizing hasn't confused you, you'll probably notice a few things when first looking at this figure. In general, that there are three Canadian samples and three American samples nestled in and amongst samples from the UK and Europe. Although the samples seem somewhat spread out along the x-axis, remember, they are all within two points of each other. These are the samples used to produce the norms for the 2016 workbook. Seung Lee and Carl Hansen recently published a paper in Law and Human Behavior that provides a basis for the 2021 Evaluator's Workbook. A link to the PDF of the paper is provided in the description section below. One change in the new meta-analysis is that one American sample grew in size and two more were added. The result almost doubled the sample size to 7,244 individuals. If you permit me to toggle between the two figures, you'll quickly notice the increase in blue, or American samples, that cluster rather tightly in the lower left-hand side of the figure. The implications of this we will now discuss. Okay, new figure. With this figure, 
we will look at the new recidivism estimates in the evaluator's workbook. Thankfully, this figure is simpler. On the x-axis, we have static 99R total score. On the y-axis, we have the five-year sexual recidivism rates. This line represents the estimated five-year sexual recidivism rates in the 2016 edition of the workbook, generated from the 2016 meta-analysis. The median recidivism rate is 5.6%, associated with a score of 2. The red line provides the new recidivism estimates from the 2021 meta-analysis. An interesting finding is that they are somewhat lower. The median recidivism rate is now 4.6%. This is probably not a surprise to you if you remembered that the three samples added to the meta-analysis had a relatively low rate of sexual recidivism. I graphed the difference between the two recidivism rates here with this dotted line. The scaling is given on the right-hand side of the table. You'll notice that as the recidivism rates increase, represented by the blue and red line, the difference between them, the dotted line, also increases. Lastly, let's focus on the 5, 10, and 20-year recidivism estimates. This line is the new 5-year estimates we were just discussing. The green line is the 10-year estimates, also from Lee and Hansen, 2021. And the 20-year estimates are taken from a recent article by David Thornton and colleagues, pictured here in blue. You may have noticed that the 20-year rates are called projected estimates. The explanation is actually quite interesting, and is just one of the many reasons you should really read this article. I mean, the last thing you want is to get out of touch. I'm with it. I'm hip. To predict 20 year recidivism rates, Thornton and colleagues used a combination of observed recidivism rates from both different samples and from different follow up links. The workbook authors used this approach with the routine samples available in Lee and Hansen 2021 to produce the 20-year recidivism estimates available in this workbook. You'll notice, again, the lines start spreading apart as static scores increase. At the low end, recidivism rates show minimal change. This is consistent with the conceptualization of desistance as being part of level one using the standardized risk levels. And although there is greater increases in recidivism in the middle of the risk distribution, the greatest differences are observed at the high end. Look at a score of nine. There is a 10% increase in recidivism between five and 10 years. If this rate holds, you would have expected a 20% increase in recidivism between 10 and 20 years. However, we actually project that there's only a 10% increase in recidivism, supporting the contention that risk actually declines over time. I hope you found this video useful in highlighting important changes to the new 2021 Evaluators Workbook. Please feel free to share this video for training or teaching purposes. I'm happy for you to use the video or slides themselves in your own presentations. I just ask that you leave the slide intact and reference it accordingly. Also, feel free to contact me if you have any questions or comments. If you like this video, then I hope you check out my other videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel.